Hi all, how you going? Kicking off the very last one of Mike the Kiwi's videos. This one is going to be specifically on photography. Started a little bit late, just getting myself rehearsed because there's quite a bit of stuff to get going. So who's out there? Let's have a look at where we go on this one. And uh, really want to uh, enjoy and think we're going to have a lot of fun. Got a pile of information that I want to share with you just around my experience in learning photography with a few hints and tips as we go along the way. See what you think, see what helps you, see what you want to ask some more questions about and see where we want to go from that. Just waiting for a few people to join as we're going, sort of group of people collecting up and we've come to that magic number pretty well straight away which is pretty impressive. Okay, fantastic. Let's have a quick look who's on board. Alan's here already. Fantastic, Alan. Heard a whole heap from Simon last night. Wonderful to have you on board and great to be sharing some time with you. Uh, Zach, back again. Wonderful. And Nat, you made it. Good to see you. Uh, and John, good to have you on board here, mate, too. Really ramped up quickly on this one, so I'm hoping that my experiences on this will be useful for you. Um, just clearing some of those. Bonjour Laurent and uh, hola Gomez. Good to see you. In terms of being terrible at photography, mate, look, it's taken a long time for me to get used to it. And, and I, you know, apart from a conversation with my mate Simon over in Wales last night, you know, I'd, look, I didn't understand the science behind it. I still don't. And I'm not going to pretend that I'm an expert photographer. All I'm going to be doing is just sharing you my journey I've sort of structured this session out in a way to, to take you through some of the considerations, which I'll have a chat about on terms of that. Okay, and I'll, as I did yesterday, I'll take you through the setup um, of what I've got here ready for you, and then we'll break each part down and actually have a look at what that means. Then I'll do a little practical demonstration, taking a photo. I've got a bust here that uh, I wanted to photograph for a little while, so... We'll take some photos there and what I'll do is I'll share those photos later on for you to have a look at just to see what you think. Already shared some other photos to show the sort of evolution of where I thought I was okay and then when I really think I got something special with a little Aussie bring gunner that I did a while ago. Um, that's an Andy Ken's bust and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Right, I, I will check out as we're going through, just have a quick look through. Uh, Pascal, hello. And Ian, nice to meet you too, mate. Good to have you on board. And that is awesome. Did have a lot of people. Chima Miniatures, nice to have you, mate. And Kristen, wonderful, mate. Going to be doing a World of One bus today, having a look at that, talking that through. And fantastic to reconnect you with you online. Hey, look, this whole experience has just been amazing for me. I've, I've learned an enormous amount just putting together these sessions. And I'd like to think that through the series of 10 that you've seen in this last one today, um, you've seen an evolution in, in my approach. You've seen a, a bit more organised, a bit more structure around what I'm doing. Not too, dis, too much distraction coming through from the notes. I've learnt a lot as part of this. And look, I've been really stoked to be able to share. And you know, I'm grateful for you guys. I did the tally up, you know, over, over 6,000 uh, views of the live videos I've done. You know, the one I did yesterday, within 12 hours, one and a half, well, 1.1 thousand views. And it just, it just blew me away. Uh, so really excited. And, and there seems to be something that uh, you appreciate about what I've been going through here. Please continue to use them. I know this is on Facebook, so it'll drop down the news feed. You know, by the end of next week, it'll be fish and chip paper and it'll be moved on. I am sharing a few of them on YouTube and we'll see where we go with that later on. For now, though, this is all about photography. I'm going to take you onto the desk, show you the props, show you the setup. I'm going to be talking about what I've learned. And by all means, if you've got some questions that you want to ask, please do. Fabulous to see my mate Simon on board. Simon, really value that uh, advice you gave me last night. As we talked about this morning, that's all going to help inform the conversation that we have today with the rest of the guys. Hi, Andy. Great to see you. Stephen, welcome on board, mate. And hola, Carlo. Just clearing the... Uh, the groups here and Mario good to have you back mate righto so gonna go down to the bench now just let's get ready let's have a look at what we've got set up for you today
and we're going on location today to the photo booth so on the bench tonight notice the uh, light a little bit different in terms of setup today light's going to be a, a critical thing that we talk about as usual I've got my notes and there's a pile of stuff to sort of to go through you can see the structure we're just working through one there I'll come back to those a little bit later on because I realize I've probably got a pile of stuff that I want to cover up this is where I want to get into the meat of what we're talking about understanding your camera and helping you get through with that okay fantastic to have you here flip don't need to tell you much about cameras and photos mate and Andrew nice to hear you from Montreal mate and Spencer wonderful to have you on board and likewise you don't need much advice on taking photos mate but I'd really appreciate any thoughts that you've got as we go along and Leroy hi Leroy I'm just going to sign the uh, the comments off and I'm going to carry on with what we've got so guys what we've got here is some props some camera bits a little backlight the base critical part of the whole process and my glasses now I can't see without them and I use them extensively throughout it in terms of what we've got and then we're going to swing around here go on location yep that's the cabinet those are the books we'll refer to later on for the follow-up reading and here's the baby here all set to go with the light box and we'll talk a lot about that as we go through and we'll zoom in on the old camera and we'll have a look at our display I'll come back and talk a little bit about that I'll come back and talk about the settings that are on that camera and uh, we'll explain what's going on there it's taken me a little while to I wouldn't say master it but to understand what's happening I'm going to drill you down into the detail on there and explain what each of those settings are for my setup the ones that I focus on so there's half a dozen that I particularly look at and we'll talk about what that means you can hear her talking away there that's a little auto lens auto focus ticking away you hear that and here at the back is my little mounted rifleman I'll talk a little bit about later on okay and I can hear the curtains behind me in the room next door as I've woken up the missus. Yes, that has happened again. Andy, you know the story. Suzanne's awake. She's going to be loving me. It's 7 o'clock in the morning here. Uh, I know it's at night for most of you guys there, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you back up on the stand. I'm going to work through the introduction section of what we're going to do, give you the structure, and then we'll go onto the camera a little bit later on. Sound okay? Good. Okay, let's see. We don't need that there. So, guys, I've mentioned this this whole setup. I think it's important to understand. Just wait a second. Just turn her off. We'll chat away for four hours. You'll see different lights around the place. Switch that baby off. Switch one of these guys off. It's an important part of what we're actually going to be talking about in terms of photography. Photography is, you know, I've come to appreciate it. It's very much a personal thing. Um, what do you go after? What are you looking for? For me, I'm looking for trying to get a true representation of my figures uh, and I'm, I'm looking at the detail that I've put into it. So I use uh, photography for a couple of reasons. One is to check how my painting's going and I use it as a different set of eyes. What I used to do before I started taking uh, photographs is I would use the bathroom mirror. So I'd pop into the bathroom with my figure, I'd look in the mirror and I'd try and get a different impression. Those were days before I was wearing glasses. I'd pop it onto the mirror and I'd have a look at a reflection of that figure and it would give me the impression from other people's views. Remember I mentioned a little while ago about isolation. Like I, I, it's very rare for anybody to actually see my figures in the flesh. Most of them either go to uh, a commissioner, uh, somebody that's commissioned me for them for box art or the like, or the others. You know, I've only been to a handful of shows around the place 
very rarely take them out. And I don't typically have anybody visiting me to have a look at my figures. So most of what you see is in those photographs. And so when I was looking for feedback, I needed a, another alternative view to see them because your eyes confusing. Your eyes actually deceive you. And so I was looking for that sense of what the figure looked like. That's why the personal, uh, that's why that, that sense of what I was trying to do with my photos was replicate what I was seeing in the mirror with even more detail. So very much that personal preference in terms of why I'm doing it. And the second one is I wanted to share my photos and my figures with others so that I could get some feedback and look at improvement on those. Um, and that's been really helpful. And it's also helped me evolve in terms of what I've done with photographs. I've been very fortunate to have some uh, published and I've got feedback as part of that process. So that's sort of the, the introduction section. I really want to go into the meat of today's session around photography, what I've learned, how I've learned it, what you could learn, and some thoughts around that sort of stuff. Again, look, I, I, I don't know the science behind photography. I'm not an expert in it. Uh, apart from a conversation with Simon and, and numerous videos and books I've read on it, it, it really hasn't clicked. So there's some of the settings I'm not 100% clear on. Uh, where they're at. However, I know what works for me in terms of the photos that come out, and I'll share those settings with you. I'll share the detail around how I, how I create the environment for them, and I look forward to lots more experiments in terms of where I go with photography, as I'm expecting you to. So let's have a, let's have a think about it. This is a modeler's eye view of learning photography. I'm gonna cover off three things, okay? I'm gonna be talking about the setup, I'm going to be talking about the camera itself, spending quite a bit of time on the camera. That's where we do that practical bit. And then we'll talk about post-production. Not a lot on that because, look, we're gifted and uh, we're, we're fortunate nowadays to have so much material coming on digital cameras, coming onto our iPhones, coming onto whatever device you're using. And a lot of that's freely available. When I started using them, um, they were always digital. My, my early attempts at 35mm DSLRs or... or Self-loading, it's a self-loading rifle, no, no, not quite the same thing. An SLR camera, um, I didn't do any of that sort of stuff. We'll talk about Shep Payne had, had a little bit of article. It's always been a bit of a black mark and it was uh, a black art. And what I've found is, is that as we've got into it, using digital cameras, they really do help smooth out a lot of those knowledge gaps that we might have. You don't have to understand all of the science about photography. What you need to know is understand what you're trying to achieve. So we're talking about setup, the camera itself, and post-production. Okay. In this setup, we're going to be talking about just the things that go around it. So I'm going to be talking about a couple of props I've got here. I'll talk about the light box and I'll just talk about overview on the camera that I've got and some of the camera experiences that I've had. Then we'll dive deep into the camera and I'm going to cover three areas on the camera. I'll come back to these again later. I'm going to be talking about light and color, stability, and focus and image quality. So those three there, light and color, stability, focus and image quality, those are the things that once you've got in the head, once you've sort of got through, you'll be able to improve. And then the last bit, post-production, as I said, that's really just going to be touching on it. I hope that's going to be a useful set for you. Let's start unpacking that little lot. As I go through, what I'm going to do is just give you some little bit of adjustment as I'm sort of thinking my way through here. So first off, let's have a look at setup. So in terms of setup, we talked yesterday about bases. And I talked a bit about props. So I think that's part of it. So we take our figure. We'll have a look at them in a minute. We'll, we'll get get a sense of what we're going to do. But let's have a have a think about a few props. First and most importantly, the block. Okay. Let's. You probably can't see them, just think that says darn tough. That's a sock, okay, over a foam block. So for those who don't know, let me just put that out of there. Like Christmas, isn't it? Okay, I'm not gonna take it right down, but what is, that's that, the foam that you put in uh, flower arranging and the like, right? So it's a soft foam, it's a natural one, it's still in the, in the packaging material. I've covered it with a black sock. Okay, yeah, sophisticated, I know. Does the job. And you can see why it ended up doing this. 
and didn't get passed out. And in fact, it lost its friend. It's fair to say that uh, it was lonely, and so I repurposed it. Sock on block with toothpick in. Okay, this is fantastic for in progress photos of, of any subject. Main reason why pair of pliers off uncle, pull them out with this pin. The pin's a paper clip, pull them out, stick them in, and you can use that many, many times without any hassle. Temporary photograph base. The little um, cocktail stick I've popped in there was one of a feature that I picked up online. Just helps me position and make sure that I always put them in the same space, particularly when I'm taking step-by-step -step photos. So first thing, the block for most photos, uh, just for in progress. So you'll actually see some of my uh, some of my little pilots will be just on a black gauze base. Um, that's what this is. It's the sock, uh, and it's quite effective. Works well with the with the black background. Not flash, does the job. Okay. Second part of that process are other props. I, I showed some of these yesterday. These little guys, standard bases, green bays. Remember, I talked about you know you can get quite a bit of an effect with uh, a little bit of little bit of dust on there, a little bit of pastel dust. I've used it a couple of times for uh, smaller figures for display. Again, a lot of my figures are not going on a proper basis, so they're going onto these little props to get photographed. They'll just have a pin. I'll drop them in the middle of a little hole there. Photographing prop works sweet for a finished product, typically that one, whereas the, um, the sock block, okay, for in progress, this one's a finished uh, without any scenery. Alternative block, okay, little Tommy's base, painted black. The reason is I don't want the base to be a feature. Again, I just wanted to emphasize the figure itself. This is the one I use for Percy Munn. I'll be using it for others. I might do a little bit of work in terms of that, but what I also did in post-production of this guy is I, I put a little ghosted image behind it. So not having any distraction really helped with that. So again, a little prop block. That's a little Tommy's War trench base, one of Andy Belsey's, top and bottom, a little bit of a scene joined together. And my latest innovation, I shared this with you yesterday, okay, I've had, I'm a bit, a little bit nervous about sharing this, right, because this is the secret behind some of those latest photos I did, the model seller Germans, okay, um, the little French tea party, as Andy called it, that, before, after, foam, okay? It's a piece of foam sprayed with a bit of black, okay? And then I've actually put groundwork on the top. So what I've done, a little bit of PVA, various effects. The little Russian, the little cold freezing Russian, he was on this end with a little bit of ground uh, ground glass is the snow. And then on this end was the Balalaika Paya and uh, the little boots guy putting on his boots and that. And then the little tea party was on this end. Literally a prop. Uh, those guys are all on pins. They're all sent back to uh, Russia um, with, with no base. And I've used that as part of the photography. It's amazing how much you can get out of that. I'll be recycling that little guy and other figures in future. Um, but also I've got another one. Who knows what that might become. Little temporary ones. The reason for... The foam, just like the sock block, that's a solid foam. This is a sponge foam. Just makes it really easy to have a temporary base that helps me prepare the photo uh, for those little box art commission type things that I'm doing. So simple, little prop, helps the setup for the figure. Okay, so we talked about bases, we've talked about that. Let's zoom over, let's have a, have a look. You, you see behind me there, she's been sitting in the background there, the old light box. Now look, if you want a, want a tip, spend, I don't know, New Zealand 40 bucks overseas, it's probably 30, I don't know, 20 to 30 euro, maybe um, 20 to 30 US, whatever the exchange rate is, whatever your currency is, invest in a light box, okay? This one's a little uh, fold up job, it, it comes flat, I got it on... Uh, what we call it's like trade it's called trade me here but you'd know it as ebay or alibaba or whatever very inexpensive it's uh light material 
and what it does is it just controls the environment. What I like about this one, it's got some Velcro at the back. I'm able to put the backdrops on. We'll talk about uh, the importance of backdrops a little bit later on. But that light box, absolute gimme. Uh, all I did, into Trade Me, into eBay, search light box, come up with something that was relatively inexpensive, not cheap-ish, uh, and certainly not expensive. You can make your own out of a cardboard box. Yeah, and I don't know, I just found the convenience of this one really good. I've had it for a couple of years now. It's made a world of difference to the photos that I've taken. It's helped control the light, and I think it's critical. The control of light is something that will come to the camera in a minute, because that's really what it's all about. So we've talked about bases and props. We're talking about the light box. Now we're going to talk about the main baby, the camera itself. Okay. Just as a heads up, you're watching me on an iPhone, iPhone um, XR Blue. That can be the camera. So some of my in progress, not very, uh, just quick and dirty, quick snap on the bench. Uh, gives me a bit like that mirror effect I was talking. Gives me an impression of what I'm looking at. It's also a nice way to share with friends and messenger and the like. So I use the iPhone to... Uh, literally for, for quick and dirty, so that's one part of it. Uh, I've had a couple of cameras over the years, and it was, um, the, the cameras I was doing, I thought the photos were okay. They were much better than I'd done originally, and I started taking photos about like, 10, 15 years ago. Um, however, when I looked at the, the chance of actually publishing some of my work, um, I was advised to get a better camera. So I started in the early books, we might have a look a little, little, little bit later on, Mr. Black, uh, one of the latest titles, fantastic, all black, um, very special, Stelios. Stelios um, was kind enough to support me with some of my projects. You'll see behind me the um, little Mary in the background there. He's the big guy in the cabinet. Uh, he was one of the first articles I did. So the camera I was using for some of those, I actually had to get, uh, I got a friend to do some of these images with a much better camera. They were my first attempt at it. And Stelios, when I met him in, in Greece a few years back, uh, spoke to me about investing in a proper camera. And I was a little bit dicey about that, but he reassured me that in order to get uh, better quality for printing, better quality images for sharing, get a good camera. So I ended up getting uh, this little girl. She's a, um, a Canon 70D. Now that's a sort of, um, it's, it's a higher end camera. I think we're in the ADDs now, but that, that sort of range camera, um, I talked to some of my friends online. The Canon is a, is a, is a fabulous uh, camera. I've found it really useful as I've sort of learned with it. The results I've got have been, um, you know, I've been very happy with how they've come out and where they've worked. Now on the Canon, um, you get a standard lens. That's that little guy. Uh, it's an 18, 18 to 55 focal length. Uh, now I use I I use I don't use it that much, but I use that for for bigger shots for for overall composition. The the real trick of these guys is the macro on it. So I've got a macro lens that we'll have a have a look at, and so the settings I'm talking about will be talking about what you use for a macro camera. Macro means really small, so you know allowing you to focus right in. Whereas a sort of general set, and there's different lenses you can get. Again, I'm not a you know I'm not a professional photographer. I'm not um, not pretending that I, I know everything about these, but I do know this one. Whilst it was useful to start with, it couldn't get the level of detail I wanted to. It is very good for for broader scenes and it give an overall impression. However, when I'm looking at a single figure, when I'm looking at a bust, I want to be able to zoom in and show that detail. Part of the reason I like those photos is because it allows me to actually see the detail that I'm painting because I can't actually understand or appreciate it when I'm using my glasses. So uh, that's I think that's something that's actually helped me evolve the techniques I use and the extensive use of photographs to debrief, check the facts, I suppose, what it actually looks like, what it could look like, and keep working that through. Okay, so camera, lens, an important part of that. We're gonna talk more about the macro in a minute. 
The other thing that I wanted to bring out on the camera, if you do have uh, one of these DSLRs, digital SLRs, uh, I think it's it's really important as part of that to understand the difference between autofocus and manual focus. I put the, the camera on M for manual settings so I can adjust all the settings and I essentially leave most of them there. The settings I'll give you today are the ones I've been using for the last couple of months. I've been very happy with the results and as we unpack that, I'll give you a sense of the results I've got by having those standard settings and then I work on the stuff around that I can change. Leave the camera to do its job, keep testing and checking. For me, I used to fiddle a lot with the manual setting. Uh, the, correction, I have it on manual so I can adjust the settings. I used to fiddle with the lens. So you've got the old lens setting there. Let's have a look at this little guy. It's actually on the camera, but you'll have a um, manual focus and auto focus. I used to fiddle a lot and adjust that a lot to try and get that manual focus. Uh, I thought that was pretty good. However, it was time consuming and a lot and a, a lot of adjustments. So I decided to come back to autofocus and my mate Simon reassured me this morning that typically with these new cameras, the autofocus is pretty sharp. It's just getting it to, to kick into action. So when you put an object in front of it, you get your figure, you put your bust in, it might look a little bit blurred. There's a couple of little features on my camera that allow me to zoom in and do a little fine tuning. However, I've noticed when I pull out of that, it will automatically set itself with autofocus. So a little tip in terms of your um, in terms of that camera is use the autofocus, trust the machine until you're really happy with it. If you do need to do some fine subtle adjustments, you can use that manual focus. Um, and there is a, there's the ability even on autofocus just to get a slight little bit of movement on the uh, on the lens itself. Now I'm talking, you know, I'll I'll mention some terms that again I won't necessarily understand when we dive into the camera. Uh, However, if you know what you're trying to achieve, you can practice and be quite deliberate about what you're doing. We use it as part of that closeout, that plan, do, check, adjust. I mentioned uh, a few weeks back. Plan, do, check, adjust is my way of experimenting and le continuously learning what we're doing. So this first section, the setup, we talked about bases, the sock, the sock block. We talked about props. Tommy and the like, okay. We talked about the value of a light box and we talked about the camera, just that overall concept. We talked about using the iPhone, we talked about a standard the standard lens that typically comes with the photos with the cameras, and then we talked about the macro. I'm gonna have a quick look, see if there's any questions, see who else has joined before we go into the depth of looking at that camera and uh, running a bit of an exercise to have a look at the photo. Okay. I'll go through each of those settings and we'll talk them through. How's that sound? Cool. Glasses on, camera open, comments back. Okay, just while we're doing that there. Phil, how you going? And Leroy, we had that. Now I did miss a few people yesterday, so I'm just having a quick look through there. All right, Alan, yeah. Nothing new, that's good. So haven't missed anybody. I might pick up a few people later on. I just wanted to check that we weren't at that. Okay. We're going on, on location back into the photo booth soon. We're going to start talking about the detail of taking the photo itself. In my conversation last night, just sort of uh, trying to line up where I was coming from when I talked to Simon, was just trying to think about the structure of how I'd actually go through this. As I said at the start, look, I, I don't know quite what I'm doing. I know the sort of areas that I'm looking at and I've broken it down into three parts when I'm using the camera. Um, I've done a bit of study. I've had my mate John Belcher give me a, a little bit of um, guidance on it. Uh, I've tapped into people like Simon. I've watched videos on YouTube. I've read the manual. Yeah, bits of it anyway. Um, and, and it's come down to three parts for me when I'm using the camera. I talked about the first one's light and colour. These guys, when I turn them on, turn them off, okay, they all make a difference to the effect that I'm going to get. So when I'm looking at that uh, little bus that's tucked away in the back there, 
every one of these lights on or off is going to make a difference. So first one, light and colour, they go together. I remember at art school, when I was at, oh, correction, I remember in art when I was 15, yeah it's a while ago, um, my dreams of, in fact it was 14, okay so it was the year before, I remember the art teacher telling me that colour is actually not real. All it is is the way that light reacts with a, with a surface. So the sunlight as it comes down, so this black here, it's the absence of light. Okay, the white is an overdose of, white, uh, of light. But just that sense that there's no such thing as colour, it's our eyes responding and processing light onto different surfaces. So when the lights are all off, you guys know it's all black, okay? When the lights are all on, there is colour, but it can you can have too much. And so I think that little connection, light and colour, is sort of, I still can't get used to that. That we all see different things, and we all see things in different colours. However, there is there is a uniformity, and that's why I can't keep coming back to that personal, um, photography is very personal in terms of what you see. So what I see is not what necessarily you'll see when you have a look at a photo. If you have a look at that advert that I showed um, for the session tonight with a little brain gunner, I showed one photo on the left hand side and one on the right hand side. One was much more dramatic than the other. And that's my only photo that I've ever had of a, that I've shared of a flash shot. So I actually used the flash and that was a little bit of um, coaching from my son, uh, Matt, who's uh, a professional guide, but he's also a very good photographer, very good uh, videographer. So he helped me in terms of using that flash, tiny bit of uh, post-production, but that's essentially so much more dramatic than the photo on the, on the other side. The photo on the other side was where I thought it was okay. You know, there's a couple of features about that photo in terms of light and color. There's not enough light in it. You can see it's quite dark. And, the, and as a result, the colors are, are, are restricted. When we talk about detail, we're talking about the color, we're talking about being able to see more. And that's why light and color are critical in terms of what we're talking about. There's also another little feature on that guy. He's got a little bit of a backlight. One of the little setup options I, I mentioned before. This is a, a little shelf light, a little self adhesive. It pops under um, when the base is on. Okay, it's just not very complicated, too much, but there's a little base that fits on the bottom there. And I'm gonna need my light, my glasses for that one. Kids and cameras, eh? Who'd have thought? Little self sticks on a light on a shelf and just push the light. I've used that as a as quite a neat little backlight, and you'll see on that um, that left hand photo, you'll actually see a little bit of a blue background. That's this light shining on a on the black backdrop that I've got there, and it's actually the black when you get the right light on it turns blue. Light and color. That's the first thing we're going to be talking about. We'll have a look at that. We'll look at some of the settings that we're going to do there. Key here is it all depends upon. For me, for light and colour, three aspects. We're talking about the time of day when you take the photos. Notice I've got shades down. I've got the shutters down behind. That's so I can actually control the sunlight. So it's only just dawning here. The sun's only just come up, but it, that allows me to control. So what I've done is I prefer to actually photograph in the mornings and in the evenings because I've actually got maximum control. If I haven't got that, I'm, I'm having to photograph in progress, in progress during the day. What I'll do is I'll use those shutters to shut down the light and then I can control the light around it. So first is the time of day and understanding that pressure of light. Not all light is equal. And I think that's an important one. So the sun has a warm light. Some of these lights that I've got, that little guy that I've just turned on there, okay, that's a, a cooler light from a halogen bulb. Okay, I'll just turn that one off. Turn to this other one, and you see the light behind me is changing as well. Okay, so the, the light intensity changes, but also the color of the light. 
So again, that, that part of it. So consider the time of day when you're doing it. Consider the background. Now, I've got a black background. And just on the top of my uh, case, I've got a couple of others. Let me just, just show you what I've got there. So the neat thing about this little light box is it came with a series of different colours. Okay, a blue one and a white one. Okay, a couple of the different colours and they just have little Velcro straps and they stick to the back. Notice how that light's changing. All the different types of light that have that actually changes. Blue background. I don't use it. Some people might like to use it. White. Some people use white very effectively. I don't use that one either. Although I have tried. All part of the experiments, right? Key thing to know when it comes to backgrounds, black, dark, typically good for online digital images, which is what you'll see a lot of the work that we do. And then you tend to have a light blue, light tan for printed images. So that light tan, light, um, light blue, even um, a white background is very good for printed images. You get the, the right sort of contrast. So typically if you see a light colored background uh, on some of my photos, it'll be because it's going to a print source where I'm testing out a new one. Typically that's definitely for articles, for example, for Mr. Black or for the book that I'm working on. Light colored background, light blue, very good. Dark, dramatic. Now just in terms of that, what I also did is I, you know, I did try some others. This little guy, so it's, no, it's got black on the back, and it's got like a grain on the front, an orange one. Nice, but once you stick it behind a 54mm figure, too much detail, too much intensity. Uh, Simon, my friend, suggested you could play with that background in terms of maybe putting a little bit of smoke behind it. I don't smoke, I'm going to have to work out how to generate some smoke. I'm going to experiment with that a little bit later on. Other colours, I've tried greens. I've tried yellows too. They all vary, and, and you'll understand when you're looking at other people's photographs, the key to think about is this is all part of the light. It's all part of the color. Light, color, they go together. They're part of the same. So complementary, like salt and pepper. That's the way to think about light and camera when you're using your camera. When you're light and color when you're using your camera. Hopefully that was helpful. Pop those props away. Close the shade again. And onto the last part of, uh, we're gonna talk about the settings in the camera. We're gonna go onto the detail in a minute with it. Just clear a little message that's come through. We're gonna look at, uh, the, you can control the color and the type of light on the camera. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Now I'm typically using auto white balance. I didn't used to use it, but in the last few months I've found that's the one that sort of compensates for the different types of light that I'm fiddling with. So what I'm able to do is I'm able to see the light on the figure, in the little, uh, both on the figure itself, but also in the display window that I'll be looking at. And that helps give me a sense that I've, be, I've, I've got a, a bit of a feel now for how that actually works. So we talked, we're talking about the camera, we're talking about the depth, and we're looking at that first element, which is light and color. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about stability. The last thing we're going to talk about is focus and image control. Okay, so we talked about setup. We talked about the light box, which is for the light and color. We talked about the backgrounds. Okay, now we're talking about stability. We're talking about this little guy here. The tripod. That's the first thing you start with stability, having a tripod. The reason is, is because you're looking at such a fine focused area, what you want to be able to do is you don't want to have 
any movement. So the tripod is the first part of that process. The second part is a timer. So you push the shutter, nothing happens for two seconds before the camera starts playing its magic. So I always use the timer, works a treat. Um, two seconds, it allows me to get out of the way, out of the light, and I normally drop down behind the camera so I can actually just let the camera do its magic, focused on the figure, focused on the, the controlled light source that I've got there. And the last thing is what's called the shutter speed. So the shutter speed is from when that shutter clicks to the time it actually takes the photo. It also does a little bit of adjustment and just allows some more light to come in as part of that process. Now that's critical in terms of the last part which we're going to talk about, focus and image quality. So we talked about light and colour, get the environment set up right. There's a tiny adjustment that we use for light. I, I, I'm using auto white balance on my one, so I don't have to muck around too much with it. Um, this bit we're talking about stability, we're talking about making sure that camera doesn't move at all when it's getting ready. We've got a timer just to get ourselves into position, and then we've got the shutter speed that allows the camera time to get its lens ready to take the photo. Make sense? I'm hoping it is. It's an important part of the uh, what we're going to talk about because I'm going to take you on location to actually look at that camera in a, in a minute. And then we'll go through each of these settings so you can understand what I'm talking about. Now the last one is the focus and the image quality. And I think in order to do this justice, we probably need to have a look at the camera. Okay? Let's get it set up. I'm just going to get ready for the photo. I'm going to take my soft block, pop it into position. Now I've got in here on the uh, on the display. Let me just turn that around. I've got the soft block in. I've got some little uh, toothpicks to identify where it is. And here's our little subject for the day. Okay, some of you might have seen them before. Okay, let me just see if we can get some light on them. All back. We'll have a look at them a little bit detail later on, but he's my little mounted rifleman. Special Canterbury's from Gallipoli. Particularly proud of this little guy because uh, I've got some flies on him. Little tiny fly in behind his ear there on a saw, and uh, a couple of tiny flies, little black dots you see on the back there. Now, you're really not going to appreciate the detail of those or spot those unless I've got a good some good photos, but we're going to use him as our uh, sacrificial photo today. Demo model, not sacrificial, goodness no. Uh, this uh, this little guy is a conversion of a, uh, a Tommy's War Bust. You can't get those anymore. I'm hopeful that maybe they'll come back out from uh, Stormtroopers. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Stu Hale might be able to produce those. I think he bought the moulds. Um, that's a conversion of a couple I've bought together and then... Uh, Worked him up a little bit in this part. Of it. We're going to take a photo. Uh, photos today will be of him. I thought I'd use him because he's um, he's overdue for some good shots. But I also want to be able to share a couple of shots online to see how those have actually turned out. So he's on his base. We've got him there. We pop him on the block. Okay. In position. And turn on the girl here. Removed the lens cap. Now I've got a little setting on here, start stop button, that will come down in a minute. We'll have a look at that and we'll get the little turn on and you'll start focusing. So that comes on, this little screen starts getting ready and we move them into position. So how about you come down and have a look at the detail of what's going on here? We'll talk about that light again as part of it. You'll actually see that change it on where he's at. At the moment, the light I've got on, let's kill all these lights. I've got one bulb directly above us here. 
when we look at that uh, display, we'll see the effect of the light on that. We'll have a talk about that as we go. So we've light and colour, first part. Stability, second part. And this bit, we're looking at focus and image quality. The two go together. Image quality, what we actually see, how clear it is. Coming down. Hoping this is making sense to you guys. It uh, took a little while to sort of think through. I'm going to flip round. And we're going to zoom around. To the camera. So here's our little guy in the back there. In fact, I've got two bulbs above. One, two, providing a fair bit of light. Now, looking at that display, you can see there's a little bit of reflection coming through, but you can see some settings on it. It did take me a little while to work these guys out. Okay, so it's on. Set on manual. I flicked it with a little start stop just on here. What that start stop does is it presents that display that I'm doing. Okay, so that's just about ready to go. Now, just watch that particular image as I change the light. Now, I'm going to I'm going to give it maximum lighting here, and you'll see that coming on. See that light coming through? That's the cabinet. Come on. These are the two lamps that I've got. Again, another light change, and finally another one. I'm gonna do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use maximum light I can do, but that I can control, but you can see I've actually got quite a bit of control there. Just drop this guy down a bit to help us. Now what I've now got here, that little setting AWB, AWB is the auto white balance. So that's controlling the light. If I just do a quick adjustment here, let me just show you. Here along the bottom, white balance, and there's different sorts of lights. Sunlight, house, clouds, etc. Let me just come back to that, tungsten light, and there's some more little adjustments that I can make on that. I'm not gonna use any, there's the flash one come through there. I'm just going to stick with the auto white balance for now. So I know that it's actually compensating for all the different light sources. So the next thing that I'm looking at is I'm looking around this camera. As I'm looking at those, I mentioned the tripod, I mentioned the shutter speed. So just this little guy here, the two timer. Two second timer, you can set that for 10. On this one it's two seconds. So when I click the button, two seconds before it starts processing. Okay. And then I've got six second shutter speed. Six seconds, little dashes. So it will be six seconds from the time that the shutter is pressed before it actually takes the image. Okay. Now that's to do with stability. We talked light and color. We talked stability. Now we're gonna talk about focus and image quality. So there's three settings that I'm looking at there. The first one's the f-stop, and that's to do with what we call depth of focus. So that will allow me to check the focus. I'm just going to go through. What I'm doing is I'm zooming in. Now you should be able to see. See it's a little bit out of focus. Let me just come around to the camera. Just in there, see that little guy there? Autofocus and manual focus. It's set to autofocus, but what I can do... So I can do a slight adjustment, just slight adjustment here to actually just bring that in a little bit tighter. Okay, you see instantly that changes. That's five times magnified. That's ten times magnified.
So you can see straight away the importance. You see the movement that's actually happening when I'm moving the camera? That's what I mean about stability. All of that will all of that will blur. So that's why it's critical to have that. We're back in, we're just getting in position. So what we looked at, we looked at the f-stop or the depth of field there. The other part that we've actually just looked at, we've looked at the focus. The other area that I just want to mention, this little guy here, ISO. Just in the top little cover, ISO 100. For those that don't know, that's about the graininess of the quality. So what I tend to do is I tend to have that low at 100. That's critical. And then the other part that I want to actually have it, that's at 100. And the other thing I want to do is just in here, this little guy here, let me just have a quick look at that. That's called a raw image. That's the size of the photo that I'm taking. So this photo that I'm taking is 20 meg, 5472 millimeters by 3648. So it's a massive one. So when I zoom in by 10, that's the actual size of the image I'm looking at. So the three things I'm looking at for focused image quality, I'm considering the f-stop, the higher the better. So 16 to 22 is great. The, the catch with that is you've got to make sure the light, the time that it, the light is put into the shutter is important. So this balance, I'm using 6 by 16 at the moment. That, that works good for me. 6 seconds, 16 f-stop works nicely. So I've got that f-stop. The other thing I'm looking at is the graininess of the image. Now 100 is good ISO. And the last one is the size of the image. I'm always taking them with RAW. So if you've got a camera like this that you can do those three settings, that will really help you with the focus and the quality of the image you can do. Okay, I trust that helps. Now the last bit, I'm just, just getting that ready. So just you just see the position I'm getting in. Now what, I've, what I'm typically doing, the most realistic shots for our bust are either looking up to him or directly into his eyesight. So you can see I've just got him just looking up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire it. Now this one's got, uh, when I touch the screen, it will automatically start taking the photo. I'm just going to touch. First two seconds. We're getting ready. The shutter's taking now. There it is. That's the final image taken. Okay. I can review that and have a look at it and see what I think. Now what I'll do is I'll share this image for you to have a look at online so you can actually see that detail. Okay, I want to take one more just to show you that. We'll work that through. I'm going to just turn them around. So you can see here, just have a quick look. I've just magnified I'm just doing a test here so that's at a one there's that little fly that I talked about so what I want to do is I want to be able to see the fly and the sweat coming down here see that the little fly on the saws the pimples scabs there's a sweat I'm going to go up that light there, if I was to take a flash photography, one of the things with flash is it will bring out those sheen that you're seeing there. It's not always possible, depending on the light that you've got. Let me just go one down on that. Okay. You can see that, that little bit of a saw that he's got there. Now I'm just going to adjust that slightly. Let me just pull that up slightly so I can see that a bit better. It's a bit out of, oops, let me just see, I can see what you can see. A little bit out of focus, you can see it just coming into focus, you can just see that little fly. Okay, I'm going to give that a go there. When I come out of here, autofocus kicks in anyway. It's got it there, I've got lots of good light on that. The light's on his face, bouncing at him. We're looking up to him there. I'm considering... The settings that I've got, I'm just a touch. See a little green box? Now what I've done is that focus point, that's where it's 
the primary focus is. I'm going to take one more. It's all ready to go. I've got the focal length set. Depth of field 16. I've got the ISO set and I've got the raw size. So I'm looking at image quality. I'm comfortable with that. I'm thinking stability. I've got it on a tripod. I've got the two second timer. I've got the six second delay for the shutter speed. And in terms of light, I'm, I'm happy with that composition. I've got a number of lights. So at the moment I've got two lights on the roof. I've got about 10 little lamps on that display uh, on my cabinet. And I've got behind me another couple of desk lamps. So you can see there's a massive number of lights going on. And we're controlling all that light to get the right colour. I'm going to take that photo now. I'm just going to pop it into where that fly is. That's the central point. And there we go. The first one was the timer. Two seconds and then the six seconds delay to ensure everything was stable. Okay. And I will share those. I'm just going to check that little photo. There it is there. I'll share that with you later on. You can have a look at that, study that. I'll zoom in. I can see the sweat there. That's good. I can see the, the wear coming through on his chin strap. Like his eye. I can see his beard. I can see the, the gunge and dirt around his neck. I can see the little fly. And I can see the mud and dirt and the ridges on his shirt. The texture there. Okay. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Right, we'll kill some of these lights. A little bit harder when we're focusing on this here. And we'll come back up. Pop you back up. And we're going to do a bit of a wrap up. Okay. You now, as part of this wrap up, because this is my final uh, Facebook Live session. Why my final? Hey, lockdown. COVID's been particularly, oh, it's changed the world, hasn't it? And I suppose part of my response coming out of the back of Anzac Day, which is our memorial day for uh, our lost soldiers, that little guy I just showed you was, was based on Gallipoli, which was the day that our troops landed, the Australians and New Zealanders landed on the shore of um, Turkey as part of an invasion during the Second World War, uh, correction, the First World War. Um, that day is particularly special for us. The day after that, I started doing these videos. Um, a couple of weekend come through, five weeks later, here we are, over 6,000 views. Really stoked with that. And I just sort of, I, I, I wanted to see how that would unpack, what that journey would be like. Remember, I used that, that model I talked about, the plan, do, check, act. Plan, do, check, act. So I, I plan something. I do it, check how it went, and then I act or adjust on that. It's exactly what I'm doing. That's a continuous improvement learning cycle. So I've used these 10 videos for this one, for that process. This one today is specifically about photography. I set up the introduction. We talked about the setup. We talked about the bases. We talked about the sock block. We talked about the light box controller, and that came into the camera later. And then we did an overview on cameras. So you can use iPhones. You can use standard um, camera lenses or more valuably if you're looking at the detail we're looking at you get yourself a macro a camera that can take a macro lens we zoomed down on the camera and we looked at three aspects just want to reiterate those three you don't need to understand all the science behind it and you still need to understand those three things light and color go together it's critical that you understand those Black, absence of light, white, lots of light, and all the colours in between the spectrum, that relationship, light and colour. So you're controlling that first. The second thing is about stability. Making sure that your camera is not moving in any way, shape or form, and that the camera is allowing it to work and allow the right amount of light in at the right time. So that's what we covered off. And then the very last bit that we, we looked at was the image and focus quality. So I'm looking at you now. I'm not wearing glasses. You're a little bit out of focus. 
I pop these lenses on and I can see pretty well perfectly. A lot better without them. Now if I was to come up a lot closer to you with these magnifying lenses, I can't see from here, but the closer I get, the more detail I can actually get. That's what we're doing when we're looking at image quality. So that sense of focus and image quality is a critical part of the process. The camera, light and colour, stability and focus and image quality. Those three things. Get those three, understand, practice, experiment, plan, do, check, adjust. With those three elements deliberately and that's where you get. They sometimes say practice makes perfect. It's not true. It's perfect practice makes perfect. So the trick there is to be deliberate in terms of your practice. Don't just randomly play with things. Actually set them up. Use this as a bit of a guide. Hopefully it helps. I'll share those images of our little uh, Gallipoli uh, mounted rifleman later on for you to have a look. See what you think. Any questions, you come back to me. More than happy to respond to those. So 10 videos, lots of views. Hopefully this will pick up a, uh, a few views as well. It'll be useful. What's next? Well, you can find out more. I've got, got some references. We are blessed in today's day and age. I still reckon books are a useful way of spending time offline to study and learn. The best ever, and I'm going to look at these with the camera turned around because we know that you're not going to be able to see the cover properly. Let's have a quick look at those. I want to close with these because these are the people that inspired me. These are the people that I still learn, and this is a way that you can stay in touch with what I'm doing and learn a little bit more um, offline. And then online, we'll talk about that next experiment and journey. Shep Payne, The Master, that book, Building and Painting Scale Figures from Kahnbeck, absolutely outstanding. Everything from taking the standard figure, converting it right through to photography and groundwork. Absolute favourite. I know Shep was the inspiration. He has to be the first in my closing catalogue of references I'd refer to. Bill Haran, inspired by uh, Shep, but also a master. You know he's still around, he's still got a whole heap of stuff to share. This amazing book is, a, is an illustration of his first, I don't know, 15 years. So prolific. So if Shep was the, uh, was the grandfather, Bill has certainly been the man that's taken over from that. And that whole sense of the way he shared his creative creativity has been incredible. Sculpting master, creative master, dramatic historical miniature master. Nobody can beat painting, consistency, numerous practices. Month doesn't go by when Danello doesn't come out with something. Uh, out of Italy, amazing style, oils, acrylics, all types of paints. Just amazing, and that book, if you can get a hold of it, fabulous. Otherwise, study his stuff online. I think I like the book because you get more about him. It's in English. It's a lot easier to, to pick up what's going on. A legend. And the last one I want to bring to the Pantheon, I, I to all these historical classic artists, uh, Mike Blank. Mike's done a new book just recently, well worth getting. This is his classic about black and white, sort of sums up the whole section we've had today around the need to be able to control colour. Last couple, I introduced you to that before. You know, I've got four articles in here from a little uh, Mary Sergeant through to my LRDG trooper through to the Bren gunner that you saw, and you'll be able to notice the difference in photographs. And my all-time favourite, Snow and Kiwi. So if you want to know a little bit more about my painting and the like, grab a copy of that, reach out to Stellius and have a look at it. And then this, if that's a uh, World War II special, this is, again, all black, fantastic. Some fabulous uh, modellers in this little guy, which is the World War I special. In the centre is my uh, Chunuk Bear, uh, sculpted by Steve Warrilow and commissioned by Miles Humphreys. So uh, again, plenty of research, plenty of material that you can find online if you want to have a look at that. And that's just about it. So where to next? 
I'll still be around on Facebook. Um, always handy by Messenger. And I'm doing this new experiment uh, with Patreon. So if you want to learn more, if you want to see some more in-depth videos, if you want to interact with me a little bit more, feel free to come through to Patreon. Look forward to seeing some of you there. I've already got a few. I'm going to be kicking off some uh, more detailed videos next month. And I'm looking forward to that. That's a bit of support. Uh, and I think that's probably it. I think that's, uh, before I go, let me have a quick look and just make sure there's nobody I've missed. I did miss a few last week or yesterday. Let me just have a quick look in here. Mm, I don't know, it's, it's not refreshing, so I may well have missed a few links there. Anyway, let's call it time. Let's let's go out with those those final thoughts, right? It's challenging times. It's not over yet. We've all got a, a long way to go. We're fortunate in New Zealand, but we're probably locked down, you know. I don't know whether I'll ever meet some of you and then others I might meet in, in years to come overseas. If you're coming to New Zealand, please give me a yell. And I know that's probably quite a bit away for most people, if ever. We tend to travel further than people come to us, but who knows where that might go. So all I want to say is, hey, thanks very much for joining me. I've enjoyed this experience. I trust you've got something of it. I'll respond to questions online. You take care of yourselves. Be safe. Be kind. Love those that you need to love. You take care. Thanks very much. It's Mike the Kiwi saying goodbye. Adios. Farewell. Adieu. Nice to know you. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.